In this video, I want to look at how the valuation function plays a role for assigning truth values to quantified formulas. There's some complexity associated with this issue, but I'm going to put that to the side and instead focus on how to simply look at these quantified formulas and with reference to a model, determine whether or not that formula is true or false. Perhaps in a later video, I'll talk about some of the problems with this approach and how to overcome those problems. But here, I just want to lay down the basics as simply as possible. The first thing to note is what the valuation function does with respect to quantified well-formed formulas. What it does is take formulas as input, formulas like AXPX, that is the universally quantified XPX, or existential XRXA, as input, and then what it will do is determine whether or not that formula is true or false. So it takes a formula like this, the valuation function does its work, and it will deliver a truth value, T or F, not both, but not neither. Another thing to note with respect to the valuation function is it always determines the truth value of these formulas relative to a model. It's important to take note of this because some well-formed formulas might be true in one model or some models and they might be false in others. So the simple way of thinking about how the valuation function operates on these quantified formulas is to think that universally quantified XPX, a formula like this, says that everything is P in the model. That is, it will look through, the valuation function will look through the model and try to determine whether or not every item in the domain is in the interpretation of P. So we can think about this upside down AX as saying all or every or every single one. The existential quantifier, the EXPX right here, in contrast says at least one thing in the model is in the interpretation of P. So we can understand the existential quantifier as saying at least one. And we can use this information to determine the truth value of these formulas. We'll look at the, the formula here, check to see if everything in the model is in the interpretation of P. And if it is, then this particular formula is true. If it isn't, then the universally quantified XPX is false. Similarly, what we'll do is if we have an existentially quantified expression right here, we'll look at the model again, we'll look at the domain of discourse and the interpretation, and then we'll look to see if any items from the model are in the interpretation of P. And if they are, then the formula is true. If there isn't, then the formula is false. So let's take a look at some simple examples. First, we start with our domain of discourse. That I mean, we start with our model right here, which consists of a domain of discourse and a interpretation of the names, A, B, and C, as well as the predicates in the language. Our domain consists of three numbers, one, two, and three. Each of those numbers are named in terms of A, B, and C. We have an interpretation of a one-place predicate, E, which we can think of as sort of expressing evens. We have an interpretation of O, which picks out one and three. We can think of this as expressing odds. We have an interpretation of N, which picks out all of the items in the domain. We can think of this as saying, okay, all the numbers in the domain. And we have an interpretation of S. Um, S can refer to anything that doesn't pick out any of the items in the domain. So let's just say it's the unicorns just if you need with this information we can go about determining the truth value of various quantified formulas so let's take ax ex that is the universally quantified x ex what this says is that every item in the model is in the interpretation of e and so to see if this is true we look to see if every item in the model is in the interpretation of e and what we find is that this is not the case. When we look at the domain of discourse, we see that it consists of numbers one, two, and three, 
But when we look in the interpretation of E, we see it only picks out the evens, that is number two. So there is at least one item that is not in the evens, which is either one or three, and so AX, EX is false. Next, next let's look at AX, NX, that is the valuation function, how it operates on a universally quantified X, NX. This says that every item in the model is in the interpretation of X. For all X, X is N. When we look at the domain, we see it consists of numbers one, two, and three. And when we look in the interpretation of N, we see it consists of numbers one, two, and three. And so every item in the domain is N, that is in, in the interpretation of N. So the valuation for, for all X and X is true. Next, let's look at the expression EX OX, that is the existentially quantified X OX. What this says is at least one item in the domain is in the interpretation of O. We see that in the domain, there's one, two, and three. In the interpretation of O, there's one and three. And so there's at least one item in the model or in the domain that is in the interpretation of O. You only need one for this to be true, and it comes out as true, um, but we have two items right here, which is sufficient for making this expression true. Next, let's look at EXSX, that is there is at least one item X that is in the interpretation of S. So in order to check to see if this is true or false, we simply look to see if there is at least one item in the domain that is in the interpretation of S, and we see that there is not. In the domain of numbers here, one, two, and three, we see that there isn't any items in this interpretation of S or unicorns. So the truth value of EX SX is false. Here we've taken the original model that we've looked at and simplified it slightly and added a two place predicate G, where G we can understand as the greater than relationship and our interpretation of G picks out a set of ordered pairs where the first item in the pair is greater than the second item in the pair. We want to evaluate the expression AX GXA. That is the universally quantified X GXA. We can think about AX GXA as expressing kind of two different statements. One of the statements it might express is that for every item in the domain, which consists of numbers one, two, and three, that item is in the greater than relationship with the item picked out by A. In other words, where we let X stand for any item in the domain, one, two, and three, this universally quantified X, G, X, A says that all of these statements are true. That is one is greater than one, two is greater than one, and three is greater than one. So it's expressing this complicated statement of one is greater than one, and two is greater than one, and three is greater than one. And so in order for the universally quantified expression to be true, all three of these statements right here need to be true. Another way of thinking about the universally quantified X, G, X, A is as it saying that a certain set of ordered pairs or a certain group of ordered pairs are in the interpretation of G. What A, X, G, X, A states is that the ordered pair of X, one, where X is a variable for any item in the domain is found or is a member of the interpretation of G. Since X is a variable for any item in the domain, we say that one and one is in the interpretation of G, that two and one is in the interpretation of G, and three and one is in the interpretation of G. So what it's asserting is that all of these statements right here are true. Now what we see is that for at least one of these statements, it is false. 
that is one and one, the ordered pair one and one is not in the interpretation of G. We see that it's not found here. And if we understand it in terms of these component statements, we see that one is greater than one is not true. And in order for this for all X G X A to be true, it needs to be true of each one of these statements. And since it's false for one, this is false for one, the expression AX G X A is false. The next formula that we'll take a look at is the universally quantified X G X X. You know, here, what we're saying is that for any item in the domain, there is an ordered pair x, x, where x is any item in the, do the um, domain. This will be found in the interpretation of G. And so we go through the domain and substitute items from the domain and check to see if it is in the interpretation of G. And we can quickly see that when we substitute one for the variable X, we see that this is not found in the interpretation of G. And since it's not found in the interpretation of G, for all X, G, X, X is false. More intuitively, if for all X, G, X, X simply says every number is greater than itself, we can quickly look at the, do the interpretation of G and say in this particular model, there are a bunch of numbers where those numbers aren't greater than themselves. And in fact, no number is greater than itself. Next, let's look at the expression there exists an X or existential X GXB. Now this particular expression will be true provided there is a ordered pair X two in the interpretation of G. That is, there's a number that is greater than the number picked out by B, or there's a number greater than two. And what we can find is that for at least one number, at least one item in the, the domain, that number is greater than two, and it is found in the interpretation of G. And so this expression there exists an X or at least one X G X B is true. Lastly, let's look at the expression there exists an X or for at least one X G B X. So this is different than the prior formula that we looked at. The previous formula that we looked at was there exists an X and G X B. So this one is saying that there's at least one item in the domain and that item is greater than the number picked out by B. Here we have there is at least one item X and B is greater than that item. So what we're looking for here is an ordered pair since B picks out two that is greater than some item in the domain and that item is that ordered pair is found in the interpretation of G it is found in this interpretation. And there is at least one item in the domain that is great that two is greater than and that is one. So if we let X stand for one, then what we have here is that this ordered pair is found in the interpretation of G. And so this expression for there exists an X G B X is true. In other words, if you understand E X G B X is saying two is greater than some number or at least one number, we can look at the domain and look at the interpretation of G and see that there is at least one number that two is greater than and that number is one. And so we can use that information to say that this expression that we're looking at is true.